Well, off to the race as we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm Dennis. This is Alex. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you all. Thanks for joining us. If you are watching this live, we're very happy to have you. If you are watching this recorded, then we're also equally happy for you to be here. Um, today's session is all about how to set up your class notebook using OneNote. So if you were curious about how to use OneNote, what the tool can do, how you can use it in your classroom, this is the perfect session for you. Uh, if I'm looking here, it's because I have a second screen, so I'm not ignoring you. I'm just making sure I'm on track for my uh, slide deck. Um, that The link that you see that was just dropped kindly in the chat as well as on the screen at the moment is the short link towards the presentation for today. Um, I put quite a lot of content in our session in our slide deck as well. So if you are looking for really that step-by-step -step guide that you can follow along with, that PowerPoint is gonna be a great place for you to uh, use as a reference material. Um, you will also note that this session is being recorded. So if you want to pause at any point, try out and then come back and continue, you're more than welcome to do that. There will be a couple of moments where I ask you to do something, if that's the case, and you can just pause there, try it, and then assume that you'll come back and continue watching the recording when you have completed that step. Um, but before we get started, as I said, there is that link for you for that class notebook. As I said, my name is Alex. I am joining from Montreal, Quebec, which is on unceded territory. I am a, an educational technology consultant uh, who works lovely with the Cobblestone Collective. I'm not sure, Dennis, if you want to introduce yourself and give a little bit of your background and what it is that you do, go for it. Except for you're on mute, so we're not going to hear anything. <laughs> that there we go. Twice. Hopefully that'll be the last time I do that. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Dennis. I, I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and Alex and I were just talking about the weather before we came on, and it's cold here and snowy. And yes, I do have winter tires, so it's, it's a good thing to have your winter tires on. Um, I'm a technology coordinator in a school division in Manitoba, just south of Winnipeg. And uh, I help out teachers just like you uh, with all sorts of technology needs. So I am um, really excited you're you're listening to the master of <laughs> OneNote. So That's enjoy nice. yourself, learn lots, as much as you can possibly get, bring it back to your classroom and have a great time doing it. Okay, take it away, Alex. Thanks so much, Dennis. That's great. And we're, we were realizing we we're having like a pre-chat yesterday about this and we realized that we actually met each other like five, six years ago in Winnipeg at like one of the first um, collaborative sessions that we did between Google and Microsoft. So it's really cool that we kind of reconnected. And as we were speaking, we're like, yeah. you look familiar. Yeah, you look familiar too. <laughs> so it's yeah. great to see familiar faces. Yeah. So thanks so much. Dennis is going to be kind of hanging out in the background, dropping in any links into the chat or answering any questions. And also if Dennis, you have any questions or any point or you have one of those aha moments, please feel free to share. Right. No problem at all. So before we actually get started, um, I would just like to let you know that we're participating in learning from or near the traditional territorial land of one of the many Indigenous groups across Canada. Um, I'm cons considered at the moment on a traditional territory of the Mohawk and Adarashane people, um, which is a traditional unceded territory. And I just want to take a a moment to be thankful and grateful for the fact that I'm able to learn, teach, and explore uh, on this land with you. So on behalf of Cobblestone Collective, a massive thank you for hosting this session. If you're looking for any more sessions related to educational technology, whether that be on things like Minecraft or Google or Microsoft, we are here for you. We're more than happy to help out and give you assistance on any of those things. So check out the cobblestonecollective.ca. And then a huge thank you as well to Microsoft for making this workshop possible and for offering it for free to all of you educators that are watching either live or watching uh, on demand. We're very grateful that they're giving us the chance to talk about this amazing tool, which is OneNote with you today. So I've got a jam packed hour for us. Um, I've put probably a good five, six things on our agenda. I'm hoping that we will get to cover them all, but I really do wanna make sure I go into detail and make you and everyone that's watching feel comfortable uh, using Microsoft OneNote. And more specifically the class notebook. We can't really talk about class notebook unless we understand what OneNote is. So I'm gonna do my best to kind of lay the ground, make sure that everyone understands exactly what OneNote is as a tool, and then really take that to the next level by talking about class notebook and how we can use class notebook in our uh, learning and teaching environments. 
So we're going to start out by talking about what OneNote is. We're going to then move on to what you can actually put onto a OneNote page. Uh, OneNote is a really great tool. There's a lot that you can incorporate into it. So I want to make sure that we actually have the chance to highlight those amazing pieces. Then we're going to talk about how OneNote is actually organized. We might move that order around depending on how things go, but you're going to know how to organize a OneNote. And then once we actually get our mind around what OneNote is as a program, that's where we're going to move into that second kind of phase, which is what is a class notebook? How do we set that up? How do we distribute pages to students? How do we correct work and give feedback in this amazing tool? So I said, we got a jam packed session. Really, we've got a lot of things to cover. So I'm gonna jump right in. Again, if you're looking for that link to follow along with the slide deck, it is just here. It's the cc.page slash class notebook one, and that will give you access to this slide deck. So, um, you will also note that at the end of the session, we're going to talk about the Microsoft Educator Center. This is just a place that you can go and get some training. So if after today's session, you're like, my mind is blown regarding OneNote, I really want to learn some more. This is going to be a great place uh, for you to go and look. We have a lot of sessions just around OneNote. And we've even got a sneaky little promo code that you can use uh, to claim uh, a free hour of PD or professional development if you need that for your school district or your school board. So know that following along live or following it recorded counts the same, you have access to that code. So what is OneNote? How do you find it? Why are there different versions? What are those different versions? So I think when I first started thinking about <clears throat> OneNote and when I had, before I actually started using Microsoft tools, I'd never even heard of OneNote. I didn't even know what it was, but I'm a person that really likes to take Kind of notes. I like to have a place to keep all of those notes. I was I was the student to, at, in school where the bottom of my backpack was just filled with lined paper of random notes. I was not a very organized student. And once I discovered OneNote, which unfortunately was after university for me, I just kept thinking to myself, oh, I should have used this in, in university. It would have been such a good tool. I didn't even know what it was. So we've been talking about it for a while. What is OneNote? Well, OneNote is a digital note-taking software that keeps you and your work organized. So if you're a teacher that just has a ton of pages hanging around and floating around in your bag, OneNote might be the solution. If you have students in your class that you see have those just papers that are accumulating, you know, the student that's always like rifling through to find the food stained paper to show you that they did their work, OneNote might be a fantastic solution for that student because it allows them to take all of their notes in one place and have those organized. And because OneNote is a digital, it means it goes everywhere with you. So you don't have to worry about forgetting it at home or forgetting it on the, on the home computer and now you don't have to send it to your school computer. OneNote just follows you wherever you go. I don't know you about Dennis, but I remember that I used to still send all of my notes to myself via email from my home computer so that I could open them on the school computer. I know many of us are still guilty of that. Uh, no more of that, please. <laughs> OneNote will help you, exactly. OneNote will help you bring all of those notes with you everywhere you go. I know I actually keep all of my notes even on my phone and totally not related to education in any way, but I have a whole recipe bank on here that I've categorized in OneNote. So when I'm at the grocery store and I'm like, I don't know what to make for dinner. I just open my OneNote. I'm like, oh, this is on sale. What do I have for recipes in here? I go in, I pull it up, off I go. So I've got my, my recipe book in there in my OneNote binder. Great for grocery uh, lists too. And you exactly. can just keep using them over and over again. It's, it's awesome. so great. You just edit the weekly list. Yep. Uh, I'll show you how do you can even like make checklists in OneNote later where you can actually check off items if you've actually completed them. So that's it. OneNote, there's just talk about many different ways that you can use it, but at its core, it really is just a digital note taking software. So a OneNote is actually split up into a multiple different things. I'm going to try and use my pointer here so that we can actually see, not necessarily my highlighter. There we go. I'm going to go there. So OneNote is really that digital binder. It, it's a virtual organization place. So if you think about, for example, a, um, a three ring binder, one of the very traditional three ring binders with the metal clasps inside, that is what OneNote is except digitized. So you can see here that every binder is actually split up into sections. So you can see that this binder is called module one. And in that module one, I actually have three sections. So week one, week two, 
and week three. Those are individual sections in one binder. So that's a section. And then on each section or in each section, you have pages. And on that page, there are notes. So we've got a section, which would be week one. Then we've got pages, so this would be lecture. And then on that page, we have got notes. And you can already see from this little screen capture that you've got text. There's also a PowerPoint embedded in and you can see there's the beginning of a picture. So it really is that digital binder. You kind of have to think about when we used to have tabs and you have tabs for each subject, a section is kind of like the equivalent of that tab. Inside that section, you've got the pages and in those pages, you have got your notes. So that's kind of the breakdown of a OneNote binder. Now, before I really jump into explaining in more detail what can kind of go onto a OneNote binder, I just want to pull your eye for a second onto these two different versions of OneNote. One is for Windows slash Mac slash, I'll call it web, because the web version looks very similar. And the other one is called OneNote 2016. Many of us, without realizing it, are working in different versions. Today, I'm going to be using the Windows 10 Mac web version, not the 2016 version. The only difference is that the OneNote 2016 layout is different. You don't get tabs along the side. You get tabs along the cross. You don't get pages on the side. You get pages on the right side. If any of you are still working in 2016, I would honestly highly suggest that you move towards the Windows 10 or the Mac version. If you don't have that or you don't know what version you're using, I've actually put in a link here in that slide deck for you to download the Windows 10 Mac version uh, just so that you know that you're using the most up-to-date option. It really is the best version out there for you. So how do you go in and create and organize a OneNote? How do you create the binder? How do you organize your binder? I'm gonna talk you through all the steps and then I'm gonna show you how to do it. So the first thing, if you're going to do this in Windows 10 will be to launch the Windows 10 app. Um, inside a Mac, you're just gonna go into your finder. You would look for OneNote and you'll see, I'm gonna pull it up on the screen in a second. You will see, I was not joking when I talked about having let me pull this up here for you. I'm just going to stop sharing that screen for one second. I'm not joking when I really talk about how I have a recipe to try. I've got like different things and I've got in here. I had one of like all of Ina Garden's best recipes. She was like my favorite chef that I used to watch on the Food Network. So I've got like a ton of recipes of hers to try. This is what the Windows 10 version looks like. Um, if you're going through the web or you're going through Windows 10, sorry, what you're going to do is you would just launch the Windows 10 app. You would go to notebooks. You would create, add a notebook, you give it a title, and then you press create. It's really not more complicated than creating a document. If you're going to do the OneNote binder in the web, what you're going to do is you're going to launch OneNote in the web. You're going to go to choose a title and press create notebook. So where do we actually find OneNote in the web? I know that Dennis has already popped that link in, but he's going to put that in again. All you need to do is simply go to office.com. Office.com will take you to this page, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. This is just your Office 365 homepage. Nothing more complicated than that. And what you're going to look for is your OneNote application. Now, as you can see here, I don't even see OneNote. So I'm thinking, oh, no, do I not have access to it? What's going on? depending on what school division you work in, depending on what school board you work with or school district, they can actually customize what shows up in this little menu here. What you can do is you can actually go to the three dots and you might find them there. So OneNote Sway, you can see. If not, you can always go to that little waffle in the top left, go to all apps and in there under O, you should find OneNote. So if I click on that, it's going to open up this page and you'll see I can actually see all of the notebooks that exist for me, but I can go ahead and I can create a new notebook by simply clicking the new notebook button and I am going to come in and title it. So I'm going to call it, for example, uh, 2022 at class notes and I'm going to say this is for my group one. Now I've created that notebook. I simply hit create and you'll see that OneNote will automatically open this up 
in the web and there's nothing in here. There's no sections, there's no pages, there's really nothing. It's empty, which is totally fine for me. I do not mind at all. It doesn't bother me because I'm gonna actually start filling this with content. So now how do I fill this with content? That's the next step. So we've gone through this whole thing already. So how do I actually build it? I've showed you here, you go to office.com, you're gonna launch your OneNote, you're gonna click on notebook, title it and press create. Now, how do you organize? If you remember, we have sections, we have pages, and then we have notes. So what you can do is you can actually create a section, name that section, create your page, and then get writing. So it's really five easy steps. So I'm actually gonna walk you through those five steps. I'm gonna go to my notebook, and I'm not really sure why this is pinned here, but I kind of want it to go away. We'll see if I can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a section. I'm just going to move this up so that it comes out of our way so we can see everything. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit add section. And now no one can see this except me. This is my personal OneNote binder. I've built this in my own account. This is not shared with anyone. This is not out there for anyone to see. This is really just for me. And because I'm using this for my class notes, I'm actually going to keep student observations in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to organize myself by the different courses I teach. So if you are working in uh, the elementary uh, environment, maybe you have multiple subjects that you teach. Maybe you're a homeroom teacher, so you have different subjects. You could do that if you are organize yourself that way. If you are a specialist, so you teach one particular subject, you might want to have a binder for class notes and have sections for each group. It just depends on the way that you personally like to organize in this. Uh, section I'm going to keep, for example, uh, observations for English. I'm going to add a new section and I'm going to do um, an observation for science because that's the other uh, subject that I teach group one. And last but not least, I actually do health as well with my students. So those are my three sections. So I've got English, science and health. So that's that. Those are like the equivalent of our tabs in our binder. And then inside each tab, you can have pages. So on here, uh, you can actually go in and title the page. How do you title your page? All you really need to do is actually just start typing above this line and it will automatically title the page. So let's say I'm going to take something for Alex's observations because that is who I'm going to be paying attention to. And then I'm going to add another page and I'm going to actually call this Dennis's observations because I just want to have Oops, observations. There we go. Learn to type. And so now I actually just have a page for everyone's observations. Yeah, go for it, Dennis. If you had a question. Oh, I'm just follow I'm just following along. I'm awesome. I wasn't sure. Yep. Great. Yep, I'm following along. Just if Perfect. you're wondering. So uh, if I have I have now sections, I, well, I have my whole binder called class notes. Then I have sections called English, science, and health. And then inside health. I have a page for Alex's observations and a page for Dennis's observations. It's pretty simple. Let's say for some reason, I don't want health to be green. I want it to be orange. You can absolutely change the colors of your sections. All you need to do is right click and you are able to go in and say section color and you can make it any color you want. So let's say I want health to be orange. You can do that. Now I'm gonna add an actual, another page and I'm going to actually date this for February, say, 23rd. And I actually want those to go under Alex's observations. So I can actually put that into Alex's observations. So that's there. Now, one of the main benefits of using the actual desktop app versus using the web is the ability to have subsections and sub pages. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. In this example, I'm actually just going to create a new notebook so that you can see. I'll give you an example. I'll go in and do, um, I'll create a new one just so that you can see. And I'll make it, it doesn't really matter the color. And I'm going to call this class notes just so that you can see. You also get that nice little preview. But as I said, one of the main, oh, okay, let's choose. There we go. One of the main great features of the desktop is having subsections and sub pages. So let's say I wanted to have this section. I'm going to rename it health like I had the other one. But then inside health, I wanted to have like physical health and mental health. 
What I could do is I could create by right clicking a new section group. So I could call this health. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take that health and put it inside that group. And this one I'm now going to rename and call mental oops, health. And now when I go to add a section, it's actually going to be a subsection of the health and call that physical health. So let's see. And there we go. So now under the health category, I actually can hide sections. So let's say under physical health, I'm going to make Alex's notes again, and I'm going to make Dennis's notes again, just so you can see. But now I want to have notes just for today. So I'm going to add a page. I'm going to call this February 23rd. And I would like this to go into Dennis's notes. I can do the same thing. So I can actually hover this over Dennis's notes. It's actually going to put them together for me. So I'm going to, or I can right click and say, make a sub page. So now under Dennis's notes, I can have notes for today. Let's say I teach him next week. So it's be like March the 5th. I can organize those, reorganize those however I'd like. So you can still have the same pages, the same format, the same layout in the web. But one of the main reasons I really like using that app is because I can have those sections and those subsections and pages and sub pages. So for me, I just find it a much nicer layout. I find I can get myself a little bit more organized if I follow that kind of structure. That's one of the main differences. And again, if you're looking for that, don't forget I put the link right here in the slide deck for um, that link to download. So now I've seen how you can actually organize uh, a binder. Well, what can we actually put on a page? Now that we've got this wonderful structure, what can we actually start implementing on that page? OneNote is so wonderful because you can include so many things. So we were talking about checklists or recipe lists or grocery lists. That's a great thing to do by using the tags. So you can actually tag things as like to do or to buy or to check on. We can include those in there. We can actually ink so we could draw right on our screen. We can insert videos. We can insert files. We can record audio inside OneNote. We can clip and paste content really easily. And then we can also share our OneNote, which is what we're going to talk about in just a few moments when it comes to the class notebook. OneNote also, because it's part of the Microsoft 365 suite, it also talks to our other tools. So it can take your meeting notes. It can be connected to Teams, which we're going to see with um, our class notebook in a second. We can actually integrate it directly into Outlook. So if we want to have um, our Outlook calendar copied over and take meeting notes, we can absolutely do that as well. So OneNote is, has so many things that we can include. I am going to show you that now. So what can we actually put on a OneNote page? I'm going to be working in the web just to keep it simple. So I'm going to start on that home a tab across the top. And you can see I've got really basic things like bullets. I've got number bullets. I've got indenting for paragraphs. I've got some different styles. So I've got headings. So for example, I want to talk about Alex's observations in health class today. And I'm going to start under the behavior category for her. So you can see that's going to be in blue. It's also going to be a little bit bolder. And that's simply because I've used heading. And now when I start typing, you'll see that the text is different. That's because it's just going to regular text again. So I can say like Alex uh, has really improved on her in class participation. You can see that OneNote does have a spell checker. So you could change the language. I believe this is already set up for US, but you can always say, you know what? I want to go in and set the proofing language, and I would like this to be for English Canada. And there we go. We won't get corrected for our use anymore. So now I want to, I'm glad Alex has really improved. I want to note some of the things that I was really looking out for when it comes to her in-class participation. So what I actually build for myself or for my students would be in this tags category, a whole bunch of tags. So I've got things like to do, important, a question. Maybe I want to tag something as a website to visit. Maybe I would like to tag things as 
I don't know, a schedule a meeting or someone to call or anything else. These are all the tags that are there by default and you can add your own, but I'm actually gonna just use this as a checklist. So I wanna see how she um, was doing in, um, in collaboration with her peers. Uh, I would like to talk about how she was participating um, in uh, our oral communication in class. I would like to hear her um, articulate her ideas and I would like to hear her whatever else it may be. Articu, there we go, articulate. So now with OneNote, what I can do is I can actually go in and say, okay, every day I'm just gonna copy and paste this checklist. Let's say I have a different day and I think it was March 5th or whatever I said it was going to be the next class. I can just paste that right over. I've already got that checklist. And now on the March 5th class, I can make, you know what? Alex really did participate in oral communication today. She did a great job of her of uh, articulating her ideas. But you know what? She didn't really collaborate with peers well today. That's something I'm gonna watch out for in the next class. You can use these to-do lists in a million and one ways. This is just an example that I'm giving you now. I'll give you another example when we talk about the class notebook in a second. So that was the tags. This is the uh, spell check on or off if you'd like to see it. Then you've got here this dictate feature. Um, I'm going to show this because I just think it's such an incredible tool. But OneNote allows you to dictate into your a binder. So if you're someone that would like to record notes and just have it type what you say, this is great. For students who need that accessibility piece, whether there's a physical impairment when they can actually type on a keyboard, this would be a great way to actually have them input a content. So if you click that little arrow, it'll give you a, a choice of language. So I'm gonna choose English Canada and I just press the microphone. If you're working in the browser, we'll ask you, are you allowing it to do that? You can say yes. And then now anything that you say, will actually automatically be recorded onto your OneNote page. So for me personally, with students that have any kind of challenges when it comes to physically typing on a keyboard, this is such a great way to get your content there. Yeah, I have a lot of teachers that use this all the time with their students. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's incredible. And I don't know for you, but I talk a lot faster than I type. Yes. So for me, if I just want to quickly like get some ideas out there, I'm just going to talk them out because I know that I'm going to forget. I may as well yeah. just quickly say them and then I'm going to make sure and maybe go back and edit and make it a more cohesive sentence or a cohesive thought. But at least I can get those ideas out on the page really quickly. Yeah, so that's great, Dennis. It's great to hear that. I think the dictate feature across any environment is a wonderful thing to use. So that's another thing that you can do is just use that dictate. You've also got, as I said, a bunch of other things that you can do. You've got a whole bunch of different tags that you can use. What I love about OneNote is as well as you can search for things. So I could search, for example, for to do, and it'll bring up anything that I listed as a to do. In the actual desktop app, if I mark something under to do, for example, and I say like um, grade um, my assignment one, and I want to go in and I want to um, prep for not Oreo, there we go, prep for next class, for example. When I actually search, let's say I change the page and I go and search, I can actually search for tags. So I wanna search for the to-do tag. And if I do that, it will pull up anything that I have unchecked as a to-do. I think that's so awesome. I like don't remember what I have to do. I don't really care where it is that I'm searching. I just want to see across this whole binder what is there for me to do. That will pull it up for me. So a great way to keep yourself on track as a teacher as well. We'll see how helpful this could be for students when we're talking about like homework assignments, for example. So that is a another great feature of the tags. What else can you add onto your page? Just because we're here, we may as well keep working on this page. I am going to go in and under the insert, which is the next tab across, I've got a bunch of different options. So I can insert a table. You'll see that it will just build a very generic table. You've also got shading for your tables. So you could have, for example, a dark heading across the top 
And then here, let's go with like a light blue. So let's say something like this. And now you've got a pretty nice table. Let's say you wanted to categorize on a scale of one to five, how the student was doing in their lesson. You could take that and again, you can edit the colors of everything as you want. So really easy to build a table in OneNote. You can actually go in and add right into OneNote a file. So it'll allow you to do a file attachment or an actual file printout. So if I say a file attachment, it's going to bring up my uh, my desktop. Let's say I'm going to go in and I'm going to look at this happened to be a body parts quiz that I was doing for an English second language. I'm actually going to bring that in and you'll see that it brings in just the file. I don't actually see the PDF. What I could do, though, is under that same option, go file, insert a printout, go get that same body parts and open that. And this time I actually can have the picture of the PDF and not just the PDF. If you're doing this in the web, it'll allow you to do um, PDFs or documents, Excels. If you're doing this on the desktop, it'll even let you bring in PowerPoints and see those PowerPoints live and integrated into your OneNote. So a great way for you as the educator to bring everything together. Super helpful for students as well. You can integrate pictures. It'll allow you to pull pictures from everywhere. You can insert links. We're gonna look at how you can do audio recording. I'm gonna touch on that when it comes to the class notebook in a second. You can do math. You can have emojis in there if you wanted to. You can have forms. So we can actually integrate a Microsoft forms and you can include stickers. I love stickers. I love stickers because they are editable. So let's say I wanted to share this page with students eventually. I could say, well done. And I could actually put Alex's name in there. And I could say like, great. And I'm gonna add that in. And now they actually get a sticker on top of their work in the OneNote binder. We'll see this as well when it comes to our OneNote class notebook, but just know it's there and you can move it around as you wish. So let's say we'll put that there, okay? So that's that stickers. And then last but not least, you can absolutely draw. So if you wanted to, for example, highlight that there was a mistake here, you could click on that pen tool, choose a color of your choice. There are many other colors to choose from and just say, like, okay, we obviously need to focus here and here and here because that's where some of the errors were or say things like this one was great, this one was great or any feedback that you wanted to give, you can draw as well. So OneNote has a ton of different things that you can do on the page. Really the, the options are unlimited with as far as you're, as far as you can imagine, you can do with OneNote. So if I come here and I'm actually gonna go in and back to my OneNote. Now we know what OneNote does, What's the difference between OneNote and the next tool that we're gonna talk about, which is Class Notebook? And the easiest way to think about it is that OneNote is for you. It's really your personal digital binder, as you can see here. Class Notebook is for you and your students. So it's a class binder with collaboration built in. So you do not have to share anything with your students. You don't have to go in and share every page with anybody that wants to see it. Class Notebook allows you to bring your students into this digital binder space where you can observe what they're doing. They never need to send their work into you because you can simply access it through the notebook in and of itself. You will see that remember when we created our OneNote, there was absolutely no sections. There were no pages. We had to do all the building ourselves. You'll see that with Class Notebook, there's actually some pre-prepared structure that exists in the binder just to make your life easier as the educator and also to help facilitate the learning for your students since there's already that structure to follow. So inside a Class Notebook, there are four sections. They're really section groups that exist. One being the collaboration space, one being the content library, one being a teacher only section, and one being an individual student notebook. So what that would look like is, you know, among the left where we created like health, English, and math, for example, you would have collaboration space, 
content library, teacher only, student notebook. And each of those spaces has its own um, accesses and its own permissions. So a collaboration space looks like a space where everybody can work. So teachers can edit here, students can edit. It's a place where you could facilitate group work and where you could get students to really do things like mind mapping or brain mapping or um, project planning. It's a place where everybody could work. Classroom observations, anything that you wanted to do, you could include in that con collaboration space because every single person can go in and work on it. Then you have a content library. And as you can see here, this is where they suggest that you as the educator publish course material for your students. So teachers can edit the content, but students can really only view the content. It's not editable by them. So think about this as kind of your virtual photocopy. Students could get a, could be able to go and take a look, but they can't make any changes over top of your version. Then you've got a teacher only space. This is new. Um, this is a private space for teachers to work. Students cannot see anything here. So if you want to keep grades in the same place as the student work, you can absolutely do that. Nobody can see this space except you. And then last but not least, you get that student section where teachers can see, but no other students can see any notebook that isn't their own. So if I was in class and I was a student, I would see Alex's section and nothing else. Dennis would see Dennis's section and nothing else. We wouldn't be able to see each other's work. The only things that we could see besides our own was that content library and the collaboration space. So how do you set one of these up? Because it's a little bit different than a OneNote. You have a couple of choices. I'm gonna show you two ways that this can actually be done. The first one is going through your Microsoft 365 account and creating a class notebook. The other way is through Teams. I'm gonna show you this one first. So all you need to do is you'll need to go to office.com again, and you're gonna try and find the class notebook at this time. And in here, you can see that we do a really good job of laying out all the steps for you. All you need to do is follow along. So you're gonna name your notebook, you're gonna see what it looks like. If you wanna have teachers, let's say you're doing cross-curricular, you want to work on projects, you have a co-teacher, you have a student teacher, you would like them to be able to go in and see, you could add other teachers. You're gonna add your students. You're gonna design the students' spaces, make sure that they uh, that space works for them. You get a preview and then you're completed. And it will give you a really good indication of what your class notebook will look like before you press create. So you'll be able to really get an overview or that preview of what your class notebook will look like. So I'm going to do that with you now. So I'm actually going to go back to my office homepage, which looks like this. And as you can see, I can't find class notebook anywhere. I don't see it. So I'm going to have to go to that little waffle, go to all apps. And this time I can find class notebook under here. Uh, we also have a link directly in our PowerPoint to the class notebook. I've put a link in there as well. And you will get this page. So you can um, create a class notebook, add or remove students from a class notebook if you have some, add or remove teachers, or manage your notebooks. So I'm actually going to create a class notebook. And I'm going to call this uh, Alex's group one student. So our group one class, let's just call it that. Okay, so there's my binder. I'm gonna hit next, and this is an overview. So as you can see, there are those four spaces that I just walked you through. So I'm okay with that. I'm gonna hit next again. And then I'm gonna see, do I want any other teachers to join? Not particularly for me. I'm not doing any co-taught. I'm not doing any cross-curricular. I'm really, this is for my homeroom. So I'm not gonna add any other teachers. And now I have to add the students. If you already have your students existing in Microsoft 365, you will just be able to search for them here. So I'm just gonna search for my student whose name is Adele. There she is. I'm gonna look for my other student whose name, oh, there we go. Let's see, I can't even remember all of my students' names. I think there's a Michael, let's see. Alex, how are those populated? Or do they automatically come up? Um, yeah, as soon as you type three letters, it'll you can see that they start coming up. So let's see okay. if I can find some students. I know that um, 
Let's see. It's funny because these are auto populated, but you need three of them. Let's go with Alex. J O N. Let's see if we've got anybody with that name. There we go. Jonathan. Joni. That should be another one. If you um, have a class list, you can just copy and paste all of their email yeah. addresses and pop them in there to make your life a lot easier because this will yeah. search through the actual directory, most likely of your entire board. Right. So we get in situations where you've got like two Michael Smiths, you need to know which one you're talking right. about. Okay. Uh, so you could copy and paste them in. So those are my four students. Imagine I've done 25 of them, 30 of them, depending on my class. I'm going to hit next. And then you can see that this is, we're determining what's gonna be inside each student's private notebook. So every student will get this as their um, structure. So I'm actually not gonna do handouts, class notes, or homework in here. I'm gonna add the sections for each of the subjects that they teach, that they do with me. So for example, health, <coughs> science, English. I'm gonna change this quizzes to just say, um, daily thoughts, because I like to just have a section for that. Uh, daily thoughts and reflections. And then I'm actually okay with them having a section just for homework, because I don't mind putting everything together. So we're going to do that. Those are all the sections for my students. I'm going to hit next. And as you can see, this gives me kind of an overview of my, of my notebook. So I've got that collaboration space, the content library, my teacher only section, plus those four students that I added. And then you'll also see that I can flip over to the student notebook and see that they're gonna get daily thoughts, health, science, English, and homework. So I'm okay with that. I'm happy with the preview. I'm gonna hit create. And this will actually take a little bit longer than a regular OneNote setup. And that's because it's actually doing that permission creation across the different sections of your binder, plus it's creating those individual sections for the students. So there it is, it's done. If I wanna open it, all I need to do is sit open in OneNote online. And now I've got that binder that's working and available to me here. Now, if you use Microsoft Teams, you might end up actually saving yourself some time. And that's because you can actually create this through Microsoft Teams as well. So you'll see that I have a example class here. And when I go to class notebook, which is already one of the tiles that's there for me, you can see that I can actually set up a OneNote class notebook from inside Teams. Now, what's the benefit of this? I don't have to add my students because my students are already a member of the team. So I don't need to now go in and add everyone. So I could say I want to do a blank notebook. Yes, I'm happy with those sections. This time, I'm just going to leave those four sections as an example. And you'll see that I completely skipped over the student section. I don't need to add my students. They're already here. They're already a part of my team, which means all the students that are a part of my team are automatically going to be imported into my class notebook. And as you can see, as I mentioned a couple of moments ago, it takes a couple of minutes for it to actually be created simply because it's doing all of the permissioning and managing everything. But you'll get the same end result. The nice thing about this is that it's integrated into Teams. So if you're a Teams user, you can actually use this to send out homework assignments and have those assignments be graded through Teams, one of the big advantages. So for now, here's my class notebook. Uh, it always comes with a welcome section. Many teachers feel the no, don't feel the need for this, so they actually just go ahead and delete it. You're absolutely welcome to do that. But if you've never used Class Notebook before, it gives you kind of the frequently asked questions. You get lots of links to have a help center. It explains the different sections, what they can do with those sections, etc. So here are those three those three main chunks: that collaboration space, which I mentioned to you. In that collaboration space, everybody can work on things at the same time. A content library, which is really just for you as the educator to post material and for the students to go and then use as a reference. You get that teacher only section, which is not even visible to anybody as a student. It's completely hidden. They don't even see it. And then in, inside each student, there are those five different sections that I had initially created. Okay. I like I, I like those uh, uh, welcome section. I know my teachers enjoy it too because they don't know and they get a good explanation on each exactly. one of those sections. It's very good. And something I that like you it. can do too is that like maybe there's content in here that you don't really need the students to see. 
you can always actually on the desktop version, you can actually password protect it. So students won't even see it. It will just show up as blank and then you have to enter a password to see it if you want to, but just know that you could do that if you needed to. But that's true. There's lots of great resources like there's the assistance, there's how to get started, there's training, there's feedback, there's a ton of great things in that welcome section if you do want to take a look at it. So now we've got this library, this digital binder. Really think of this as like your teacher binder plus your grades binder plus all of the students do a tangs kind of all condensed into one space that you can now seamlessly work in with your students. So I've got a couple examples for you of how it can be used. So this is an example of the collaboration space for a group project and this is a mind map. So they were talking about uh, how do different regions how, did, how does where you live affect what you do? So they were talking about like, okay, what is the location or place? How does the, um, the what do the regions look like and how can that impact? How was the interconnectivity between where you live and the access to resources? So you can see that every student was actually working in a different color and they were all in charge of working on one section, but they were all working on the same page in the binder. They've also got, um, in here you can see there's one student that clearly likes to draw. So it's a, an, another way that they can use that draw feature to get their content on there. And that collaboration space really is a free for all space. Everybody can work in it. It's a great place to get ideas out, a mind dump, one of those brain maps, a great place to work collaboratively with students because you know that everybody can actually get onto that page. The content library, however, is a space for you as the educator to post content that the student can then go and refer to. So this teacher, for example, posted their lectures and they always have a problem of the week, like a fun problem of the week that the students can solve. And this happened to be one of them. So that content library, students can go and look at it, but they can't do anything with it. So how do we actually get that out to them? This is where the magic of OneNote class notebook really comes into play. So I'm gonna give an example of a, um, a problem of the week. So in my content library, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say a new section and I'm gonna call this problem of the week. And you can see it's inside the content library. And now I'm gonna call this, uh, let's say the week of February, let's say it was 21 because that was the original date. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go do my February 21st content of the week, problem of the week. So I'm going to go in and say whatever my problem of the week may be. Let's say uh, yesterday it was minus 25 and today it is minus 15. And then I can say what is the difference in temperature between yesterday and today? And then let's say is it warmer or colder uh, today? compared to yesterday, let's say include, uh, I'm actually gonna make this a little to-do list. So I'm gonna go in and tag this as to-do, not that piece, hold on. I wanna say include a drawing to, there we go, to demonstrate your understanding. Let's say, and let's tag that as a to-do. Okay, so that's pretty simple, not super complicated. Um, I can go in and if I wanted to make this fun, insert a picture. For example, I'm going to search online. And I'm going to say a cartoon uh, thermometer. See what I can find. There we go. To help students. I'm just going to get that and plug that in. Now I'm building this in the content library. No student can make any changes. No student can work on this. It is a 100% view only space. So how do I actually get this out to students? You'll notice that I have an option now in my menu since I'm working in Class Notebook called Class Notebook. So I'm gonna go into Class Notebook and I can see that I have a bunch of options here. And again, all of this is documented in the PowerPoint slide deck. I've got those step-by-step -step how to distribute a page. And actually I just realized this should be here. There we go, may as well fix it while I'm there. How to distribute a page. So you're gonna find that class notebook section 
You're going to go to distribute page, and then you're going to send that out to students. Really simple. So here's my page, week February 21. I'm going to go to distribute page. And if I just click distribute page, it'll give me all of the steps that I would like to do for sending this out. Just know that you can distribute to an individual person. So it'll actually give you who exactly do you want to send this to versus everyone. You could actually go in and say that you want to distribute this to a group. So you could actually send out one page to a specific group of students and a different page to a different set of group of students, just in case maybe they were at different levels. Or maybe if you wanted them to do collaborative work as well, you could actually do that through this group distribution. You can send this across multiple different notebooks. So if you have multiple classes and you're creating the same problem of the week for multiple uh, groups, you can actually distribute that out to those multiple groups. I'm going to distribute the page to every one of my students. And I'm going to put this in the homework category. And it's going to hit distribute. And this is a virtual photocopy. So it's taking your page and it's saying, OK, Adele gets a version, Alex gets a version, Jonathan gets a version, Joni gets a version. And each student will get this entire page in their homework section of their own binder. Students can also go in and copy pages. So they could go in and right click and say copy and bring that into their own binder if they wanted to do it. But I like using this distribute page simply because I know that every student is going to get a copy. So now we can pretend, okay, I'm Adele. I'm coming into class. I wanna see what we have to do this week. So I'm gonna go into my, my binder. If I really was Adele, we wouldn't see any of these other students. We're just gonna pretend. And I'm going in my homework and oh, I see there's a new page in here. I'm going to go in and take a look at it. So yesterday was 25 and today's minus 15. What is the temperature difference between? I know it's 10 degrees. And uh, is it warmer? It is warmer today. Uh, include a drawing. I'm going to check that off because I'm going to go in and draw right now. And I'm going to say this is minus 25. And today it is minus 15. And since the temperature went this way, it means that we are getting warmer. And there we go. There's my homework. I completed the problem of the week. I am good to go. Super simple. Students can easily do that with a mixture of typing, with a mixture of um, check marks. I can also, if I'm a student, leave audio feedback. So I can actually go into insert come here and say, leave an audio recording. So, Hi, Miss Alex. I just want you to know that uh, it's 10 degrees warmer today, but actually yesterday it was minus 26 and today it was minus 16, just so you know. And now I've got an audio recording in there. If I am, I'm the student. Maybe I would just want to talk to my teacher. Maybe it's easier for me to communicate my ideas that way. So every student can now go in and work in their own individual section. So that's great. I can really easily create this once. I can go in, have that one place. Now the awesome thing is that because students can't touch this, if a student makes a mistake, deletes the page, has a hard time, somehow deletes all the text, they can always come back and refer to that version that's in the content library because it's always gonna be there and it's always gonna be available to that student. But now as a teacher, I can't see myself going to Adele, going to homework, finding the 21 and going in and correcting, and then going to Alex and going into homework and going into week, for, uh, week of this day. And for example, going in and correcting, let's say this is Alex's work. I can't see myself doing that 25 times. So how do I actually make my life easier as the educator? Here's where Class Notebook is also wonderful. So if you go into Class Notebook, you have the option here to review student work. So I'm going to do that. And I'm actually going to go in and take a look at the homework section. And in the homework section, I would like to look at the week of February 21. And I am going to now look at Jonathan's version. So as soon as I click Jonathan, it actually takes me to his binder. I can organize by first last or by last first. In this case, I'm going to do last first because it copies the actual uh, layout of my binder. So I can go to Jonathan's and I can leave him a audio note. Hey, Jonathan, I realize that you haven't completed your homework. 
Is it because you're struggling? Do you have any questions? Let me know and reach out. I'd love to help you. There is Jonathan's. Adele's, let's go take a look at Adele's. There's Adele's. In Adele's, I'm just gonna leave her under that insert, a sticker. I'm gonna just tell her that she did a really great job. So I'm gonna add that in. And my problem of the week is really only out of one. So I'm gonna draw for her a, oops, a, she got one out of one. This is just a bonus point. And now what I love as well is I can actually lock the page. So I'm gonna go into week February 21 and I'm gonna choose Adele and I'm gonna page lock. And I'm just gonna lock Adele's since it's applied. Now, what does locking mean? It means that Adele can't make any more edits. So I can't give her zero out of one and then she can go back and erase my zero and put a one. So you have that ability to correct. You can give audio feedback, you can give visual feedback. You can actually draw over top, you can audio record. You could go in and give those grades through simply writing out one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it is that you choose. Class Notebook really gives you a wonderful place to simply go in and have that correction. Now we've shown so many things that you can do on a OneNote page. I've showed you how to draw. I've showed you how to type. I've showed you how to make to-do lists. I've showed you how to integrate images, pictures, files. There are so many things. All you need to do is take a look at that insert tab and you'll see you've got a bunch of them. For example, math. So you want to do this on a math page. You want to have a math equation. I'm going to, for example, Let's just put this one here. It'll actually show you the steps and shows you how to get the solving of your equation. So for students that really need help with math, they could write out an equation, click the math button, and it will show them how to solve the math problem that they're working on. If students want practice quizzes, you can even actually go in and ask forms to build you a practice quiz that goes along with the type of math that you're doing. So super, super cool as well. Really amazing things that can be included in that class notebook um, option. And I just think that to get students working in an organized way, to get them working in a way where they know that you can see what they're doing, think about how much time this is gonna save. There's no, hey, send me your homework via email, get the homework, download it, mark it, take note of the marks, re-upload it, resend it back out to students or print it and hand it back out in class. This is all effortlessly done through OneNote Class Notebook simply because it is digitized and it's easy to do. You can see that literally with one click, really let's say two clicks, I can create a page and send it out to students so easily. Class Notebook is such a cool tool. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I really like it. So again, I've given you kind of all of these little snips and pieces and tips inside. I really show you how to go in, find that section, give the feedback, the different types of feedback, the locking and everything is on that slide deck for you. And again, you'll find that at the cc.page slash class notebook one. I've also given you a few extra resources if you did want to check those out. There's a link directly to OneNote class notebook. There is a link to how to get started with class notebook. If you're like, Alex, I just need like a step-by-step -step checklist to make sure I'm on the right track that's there as well. And then I have linked to a class notebook lesson on that Microsoft Educator community. So if I actually click on that, it was gonna take me to this uh, OneNote class notebook. It's, it is an hour and a half long, but believe me, it is an hour and a half well invested. It gives you all of the things I talked about and more. Um, and you will get credit for having completed that. But as I mentioned to you earlier, you do actually get credit for having participated in today's session as well. So if you head to that same website, that education.microsoft.com, you can actually sign in using your email address from your school. You can go to redeem an achievement code. And from there, you'll see that nice little code that is available to you that will give you credit for today's session in and of itself. So not only could you get double credit because you can go in and do the session on your own, but you will automatically get the credit from today's session as well. And that's it. Uh, we're right on time. I know we started one minute late, so we're ending one minute late. <laughs> but um, thank you so much to everyone that was with us or anybody that is going to uh, watch this on a recording. I wanted to make this really 
clear, simple, so you feel like you knew what you were doing, you knew what OneNote offered before we took it to that next class notebook level. Um, if you do have any feedback, please do let us know. That's up on the screen. It will also be uh, sent to you in the chat. Um, there is that feedback form. And then we do have a help email address that you can contact us at. It's help at cobblestonecollective.ca. We're more than happy to answer any of your questions that you may have around. One note, any Microsoft 360 tools or really almost anything tech, we're usually pretty good about getting back to you. And that's it. That's all I got to say. Thanks, Alex. That was amazing. I, I learned so much. I have so much I want to show, share with my teachers as well. So I learned a few new tricks. So thanks a lot. That was that's great. That's awesome. And that's it. Thank you so much, everyone.